and action. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy and I am your host, hostess. I don't know what's politically correct these days. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry as Billy Toy and I will put it right here on the screen for you. And there's also a Ravelry group called Show and Tell. And if you navigate over to that, you'll see that I've opened a thread for the knit along, which I'm trying to get off the ground. I'd like to have a start date of April 15th, so you have plenty of time to go ahead and order yarn. And I was interested in putting together a group of people who all want to knit the same sweater. It's the Sirdar pattern. They call it arrowhead. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a chevron kind of motif. I'll put a picture of it here so you can see it. And if you'd like to knit that with a group of other people and we'll come together and Zoom and have conversations about where we're at and what's tripping us up, because as you know, sometimes these vintage patterns are a little bit tricky. Please go there and indicate your interest and let's get this party started. So I have already ordered my yarn for the knit along. I saw someone had done the sweater of interest on Ravelry and actually she did it two different times using two different yarns and I much preferred one yarn over the other. So when I queried her about what type of yarn she used, because it was a little hard to understand on her Ravelry um, <clears throat> project page, she told me that she held triple a very, very fine yarn, a yarn that was getting 1500 meters per 100 grams. And she was holding it three, like three ply, but she plied it herself as she knit off the cones. She was German and bought this yarn from a German company. And I couldn't find anything in the United States that fit the description that she was giving me. So thanks to some Ravelry forum, I found my way to a company in the UK called Color Mart. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They ship worldwide. And prior to the pandemic, their shipping was included in the price. So it seems like a very good deal. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm thinking that these are remnants. They provide yarn maybe to mills that weave or do machine knitting of garments. And I think these might be like leftover runs. They have limited quantities of different colors. Anyway, suffice it to say that I have ordered yarn from them that kind of fits this 1500 meters to 100 gram description. Their yarns are sold in a very unusual way. And I thought it was worth mentioning in case other people are interested in shopping with them. Um, their system of numbering is different. They don't call things fingering or lace weight. They talk about NM numbers. And I'm just going to read this to you because it's a little complicated. This is off of their website, but I, I think it's educational. The first thing to say about the NM numbers we use, for example, 2 over 28 NM, 3 over 10 NM, and so on, is that if you find them difficult to understand, you can ignore them. The next thing to say is that pretty much any factory spun yarn sold in the world will have been described by its spinner in NM terms or equivalent. It's just that as we sell industrial cones, which we buy with these numbers on, we use them. Many craft yarn sellers leave them off. So what do they mean? Well, the number before the slash is how many strands the yarn has. The number after the slash is how many meters you can get from each gram of each strand. So a 2 slash 28 nm yarn has two strands, each one giving 28 meters per gram. When you put two strands together, the weight per meter doubles Put another way, when you double the strand, the meters per gram halves. 
The same principle applies to more than two strands. So the rule is that to get the total meters per gram for a multi-strand yarn, you divided the number after the slash by the number before it. So a two over 28 nm yarn gives 14 meters per gram, that's 28 divided by two, while a four slash seven nm yarn gives 1.75 meters per gram, that's seven divided by four, 1.75. What sometimes seems a bit odd about this resulting number is that the lower the number, the thicker the yarn. So when you go to the Colored Mart website, they have all these different weights and it's like learning a new language. But the good news is there is a Ravelry group of Color Mart lovers and the people over there are very helpful. They help me. So I've gone ahead and ordered my yarn and you don't have to order your yarn from them. I'm not suggesting that you do, but that's where I'm getting my yarn from. Did any of you happen to see the news article about the sheep that was carrying 75 pounds of wool on its back? It had been left unshorn for quite a long time. And that's about double what it would normally carry. So imagine if you double your own weight, how uncomfortable, how cumbersome that would be. Poor thing. I'll put some pictures here so you can see the before and after. I'm glad he's, he's doing well now. As someone who's a jewelry lover, I got a real kick out of hearing someone say that yarn is jewelry in string form. I think that's very clever and I wanted to share that with you. I'm not much on sports analogies because I'm not a very athletic person and I don't follow any team sports, but I do enjoy watching tennis and although Rafa Nadal is my least favorite of the professional players. I did find a recent quote of his to be quite interesting and I thought it could pertain to us. Quote, one lesson I've learned is that if the job I do were easy, I wouldn't derive so much satisfaction from it. The thrill of winning is in direct proportion to the effort I put in before. I also know from long experience that if you make an effort in training, when you don't especially feel like making it, the payoff is that you will win games when you are not feeling your best. That is how you win championships. That is what separates the great player from the merely good player. The difference lies in how well you've prepared. So on those days when your knitting is troubling you, <laughs> and you feel like it's just not coming together, maybe you can heed his words and just know that every step that you take, all the practice that you put in, just makes you that much better a knitter in the long run. So, all right, now on with the knitting. I know that's what you've all come here for. So this is my Fifi Finish It First effort. I have had this project floating around for going on two years. Is that right? Two years? Well, maybe not two years, but a while, more than one year. And I'm nearing I'm nearing the end of the knitting. There's going to be some embellishments added on to this. Um, I'm finishing the second sleeve. And this sweater was knit in parts. It, it looks like it was knit from sleeve to sleeve, cuff to cuff, but it wasn't. Um, mainly, it started out with these log cabin squares. So there's one on each front and one on each half of the back. And I'm sort of making this up as I go. I 
took inspiration from a couple of patterns. Um, this is the side that's finished. Sorry, let's get that out of the way. And the collar should turn out to be a shawl collar. And then there's some crazy funky yarn that somebody was nice enough to send me a, a small supply of that I'm going to be embellishing little bits here and there as if it's not crazy enough. Um, it's sort of like a crazy quilt, I don't know. But it's very squishy, very, I know it's gonna be very warm. It'll be fabulous next fall um, for those crisp days, maybe even the spring, I, I don't know if it'll be done. But I am almost done, as I said, uh, the second sleeve. And then I just have to insert the last of these log cabins on the back and pretty soon you'll see me modeling this. This is part of the reason why I wore something very solid today because it would be hard to show you this in front of some color work sweater, no? probably sick of seeing this one, but I have now assembled it. And I'm just down to the, ending the cuff on this side. And I have a couple of inches of cuff to do on this side. And then I'm going to do a whole separate episode on this sweater because this was a trip. I mean, this was something that had many revisions and iterations. I kept changing my mind again and again about how to approach it until I finally arrived at something that I think works. So stay tuned for that. Almost done. And then this one, I will not be showing you again until I have Lizzie of Killer Kitsch come on my show. This is the collar, part of the collar. My sleeves are both done. That's the cuff. I didn't block the entire sleeve. You can see it's still curling, but I blocked the cuff because when I stitch it together, it's important to me that those stripes line up and also that the white shows. Um, I will insert a picture so you can see the before and after before blocking how tightly the navy is next to one another. Um, and then let's see part Part of this is already assembled. There are two pieces to the front. Um, there's the underneath part, which only goes to here. And then this part that goes over it. Um, and forms this collar. And the first piece I showed you with the stripes goes on top of this. So all of the knitting is done except for one teeny little bit because I really needed to wait until I had it to this point where I could really see what was going on with the assembly. This will knit up in a strip that will wrap around the back of the neck. And for me to know exactly how long to make this, I really needed to see those bits assembled. Let me show you actually the neck. It's very interesting. If you're familiar with the fashion designer, Charles James, this reminds me of his work because 
it's not flat. This, my pictures, my still pictures might be better. When I blocked it, I had the back of the neckline actually standing up three dimensionally. Um, it's hard to even show you here, but the pictures are gonna be better than any words I could use. But anyway, that strip that I'm talking about will come around and lay over this. It's a little bit complicated, which is why I chose this pattern. I thought it was very interesting. I just love navy and white. It's always like perennially uh, a spring color combination, as is black and white. So spring is, is near everybody. We've been through a rough winter with quite a bit of snow and the end is in sight. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to go out with some photographs of another trip because it doesn't look like we're going to be traveling anytime soon. So to keep you inspired about where you will visit after this pandemic is finally behind us, a distant memory, I thought it would be fun to share some more of my travel pictures with you. I hope you're enjoying them. Today I'll be showing you Portugal. Lisbon, Porto, Obidosh, and, and Queenborough. Till next time, take care everyone, stay well, bye.